Welcome back to Golf Today. Flashback 2015, young John Rum as an amateur ASU. And I tell you what, he made a run on the weekend, ended up finishing tied for fifth. That's his best finish in the WM Phoenix Open for the two-time Ben Hogan Award winner at ASU in 2015 and 2016. His results here, TPC Scottsdale, fantastic finishes, all of them. But there you see that best finish eight years ago as an amateur from Barica, Spain. And because he comes in on such great form, has won four of his last seven worldwide. Here you go. The odds on favorite. Our buddies at Points Bet Sportsbook say plus 800 for John Rom to keep the pot boiling. One of his favorite places on the globe. And taking a look of, of late, he just continues to, to hoist trophies, find himself in contention. And October winning the Spanish Open and very important event for him. He patronizes his home country event. He says it carries the unique pressure being often the highest ranked player in the field to go ahead and win your national open. And then he finished the year winning that DP World Tour Championship. Great trophy, by the way. I'd probably like maybe lean it somewhere near the fireplace, maybe get some get some shine on that trophy, have it really sparkle and light up the the living room, and then of course, getting a little get back, a little revenge on Maui after finishing just short last year to Cameron Smith, gets the W this year at the Century Tournament of Champions, and he wasn't done. American Express, wife Kelly, the kids are there as well. John Rom chasing that world number one, currently the number three player in the world. And this is a pretty hot streak he's been on, as you noted, Damon. Here are his last seven worldwide starts. Nothing worse than a tie for eighth and four victories. It's time now for Meet the Press. John Rahm is in the media center. It's always good to, to stay at home for a tournament, even though it's, it's a little different to the dynamics we usually have, right? Being in a hotel and or not being in a hotel. Um, Besides that, the, the best part is just being comfortable. Right? It's not like I'm overly having to try to learn a golf course or get familiar with the area. You know, it's it's a, it's a lot easier, a lot less stress um, to deal with it. So very comfortable, very happy. Looking forward to continuing the good play and hopefully showing up Sunday with a chance. Uh, going off that, you're looking for a win here, make an eighth start, but um, have finished T16 or better in all of them. Um, what about this course suits your game? <laughs> I think what I just said is more than the golf course, right? Also, being in Arizona State, I'm plenty familiar, familiar with um, uh, desert golf, so uh, it's just a place that I'm comfortable on, right? Um, it's also a, a course that, a, at first glance, it might seem easier than what the scoring usually is. Um, with the scoring conditions getting uh, as hard as they get on the weekend with the firm greens and fast, ball striking obviously is a premium, right? So I think that's always given me a chance to stay up there. Um, haven't really had a chance to win coming down the stretch. My best showing was when I was an amateur, and even then I had a great back nine to put myself in fifth place. So I'm, I'm hoping come the weekend, you know, I've, I've done a good enough job to, to go to that back nine and knowing that I have a chance to win it. Perfect. With that, we'll open up to questions with the media. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic over to you. We're going to start with the mic all the way here in the back. Dan Rappaport. Thanks. John, it feels like even before this tournament became designated or elevated, uh, with just how unique it is, it, it's really emerged as one of the premier tournaments on the PGA Tour. I'm wondering, among players, where does this tournament rank among ones that you kind of want to pick off before you're done? I think this was a designated event before we even knew what they were going to be. No matter what the purse is, this tournament is going to be what it is. Uh, very few sporting events in the world can comfortably be happening the same week as the Super Bowl and still have the impact that they have like this one. Uh, with that said, I don't think it's everybody's favorite. Right? I think either you love it or you hate it. You either want to play it or you don't, so there's no in-between. Uh, in my case, I love it. I want to come every year. Uh, it ranks highly in my in my list, but uh, I know a few people that would put it very far down their list. So uh, I don't. I wouldn't know what to say. Because they just don't want to deal with all the hectic and the craziness. Whatever it may be, yeah. Um, I mean, since I came first time eight years ago, 
can't believe it's been eight years. Um, it's, it's gotten exponentially louder and louder and louder, right? It's been a significant difference every year. So I get it. I mean, in 16 last year when Justin Thomas chipped in, I didn't want to see a Dasani water bottle coming straight from my head from the third story, but I did see it. So those are the things that hopefully they can rein back a little bit on and, and keep it <laughs> strictly about the game. Um, but, again, those are also the things that maybe people don't want to deal with on a, on a regular basis. Uh, again, it's one week a year, so I think a lot of us welcome it for one week. And then we'll keep Mike in the back. We'll go here, Ben Everill. Hey mate, you just you just talked about how you know it's a Super Bowl week. Um, everything's usually happening here. This is also a betting state um, that fans can legally bet here. Do you think that the on-site activations, both here and what they're building across the road, etc., give another level for fans um, to sort of get excited about? I'm not going to lie. I know very little about gambling. Uh... I don't like gambling in that sense. Uh, on the golf course with friends, maybe, because I have some control over it, but uh, I don't do the sports book or draft games and things like that. Uh, so I can't, I don't know what's going on. So uh, I really don't think, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was going on before it was legal, so I don't think that's going to change much. And over here, MK with CBS. Hey, John. Um, you had mentioned this being a home tournament, and I'm curious if you have any normal live specific day-to-day -day routine that you're excited you get to, to enjoy this week while teeing it up. <laughs> uh, sleeping in my own bed, big, big plus. Um, it's just waking up at home, right, and knowing that you're home is, I don't know, something relaxing about it. Uh, you know, morning and nighttime routine with, uh, with the kids, in hotels, sometimes you're not always in the same room, or you know, it can be a little bit more hectic. They're comfortable with it; it's very easy in that sense. So, uh, there's little things. Knowing that there's certain restaurants that I can go to and, and know I'm going to be taken care of, being a, a server relief ambassador and living at server relief, knowing that I can go to the club and again have a, a relaxed afternoon if I need to. Um, I feel like I have a few more ways, a few more outlets to kind of R and R if I need to throughout the week more than a a regular tour event where I don't know the city well. World number three, John Rom, always thoughtful uh, with his answers, I feel, in the media center. What did you take away from what he had to say? The fact that he referred to how comfortable he is here twice, how he referred to that it's a low-stress week mm -hmm. for him, how he embraces what he referred to as the craziness here. Others stay away because it's not to their tastes. He wants to play here every year. This is a guy whose game is in top notch, and he's playing a golf course on a tournament where he feels extremely comfortable. That ought to be somewhat worrying for the bookmakers that he's not paying any interest. Yeah. To be right out, but certainly his fellow competitors as well. And he probably knows that there are some players here that may not be as comfortable with the mayhem that he is. And I also found it fascinating. He said it's even louder exponentially compared to 2015 when he first played it as an amateur. That, that's saying something. And it is, isn't it a little... I'll put it in a way, a little strange to hear a guy like John Ram, who seems to work on a knife edge when yes. he's playing golf. He's, he always comes across as tightly wound. He's a fiery guy. He would be the kind of guy you would think, with the theatrics out here, would be kind of thrown off a little bit more, maybe mm. a little less tolerant uh, of some of the antics out here. But he actually embraces it. And I guess that's the truth of playing a TPC Scottsdale. The more you embrace it, the less likely you are to be bothered by yeah. people. It's when you come across as not being particularly interested or a little standoffish with people, well, then they're, they're just going to pile on. But I also detected just a little bit of, of a caution flag from, from John Rom saying he didn't want to get a Dasani bottle to the head uh, of, for example, if there is an ace at some point this week, because we, we do see debris, cans, bottles every now and then thrown on under the ground. So even while he embraces the environment, he doesn't want it to kind of tip over that edge where it just becomes total chaos. And he did point out that he hasn't actually ever really been in contention with a chance to win here. Mm. His fifth place finish came on the basis of a good back nine on Sunday. So if John Ram is in position to win, it'll be interesting to see just how much of the theatrics he's willing to put up with yeah. over those last few holes, because it really is, there is a lot at stake here. And for guys like John Ram, when you're playing for history, you're playing for world number one rankings that you think you ought to already have, yes. then, and you want to beat the best guys in the world, almost all of whom are here, that's, there is a lot at stake on Sunday. So you, the idea of being distracted or diverted from your pathway by, by someone at a party, 
That, that might wear a little bit thin for John. That's a great point. And Phil Mickelson, uh, I think, is a good comparison to bring up. When he won here or was in contention here, he won 16 times at ASU. John Rahm won 11 times at ASU. Should John Rahm find himself in contention, I would think this place would go cray-cray, as the kids say.